All right, welcome everybody to the April 27th Hyperledger Technical Oversight Committee call. As uh, you are all aware, you've all been on the call before. Uh, two things that we have to abide by. The first is the antitrust policy that is currently displayed on the screen. And the second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Uh, so for announcements today, we have the standard Dev Weekly developer newsletter that goes out each Friday. If you have something that you would like to include, please do leave a comment on the uh, wiki page that is linked in the agenda. Any other announcements that anybody would like to make today? Quickly, I will point out that uh, Hyperledger does have a Reddit and we staff have been given uh, permission to engage. So uh, if you go to our Hyperledger and Tell me your Reddit username. I will give you the appropriate flair as a member of the community. And I, if you want to jump in and answer questions and stuff, that would be great. That's all I got. All right. Thanks, Ray. Any other announcements that anybody would like to make? No. Okay, uh, quarterly reports, uh, the Hyperledger Fabric Report is linked here in the agenda. Stephen, I did see that you merged that this morning. Um, so uh, there were, I think, a couple of people who hadn't had a chance to look at it yet, but please do uh, take a look if you hadn't had a chance, uh, good information in that particular report. Shoot, I merged it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what I pretty sure that's what I saw. Um, oh, man. Um, although it is it's I'm just so here just in the morning, so uh, I may have missed uh, misread my email. No, I did. Uh, I'm so used to hitting an approval and then seeing the merge and merge button pop up that I just didn't even think. My apologies. I shouldn't have done that. However, no it was a report. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely was. I, I think you were maybe just a couple of days early on that merge, but that's okay. I think um, people can still obviously have a look at it uh, and and see if there's anything there that they would like to comment on. But uh, Dave, I really appreciate the reports that you do put together for Fabric. All right, uh, as far as other reports, uh, Transact is, um, Another report that we have that's been um, past due. So I know Daniela did say that she was going to reach out to Sean this week. I don't know if Daniela has had a chance to do that as of yet. Um, and I do not see Daniela on the call part. Hey, um, we had a call with Sean yesterday. Um, so Sean supported uh, moving Transact to dormant status, I believe. Uh, so and, and eventually end of lifing it, uh, they wanted to make sure that sort of all of the uh, everyone had had migrated uh, off before they totally end of lifed it. Uh, but he did support moving it to dormant status. Okay, thanks. Hart. Um, we can then get a PR open or I mean an issue open for that so that we can um, uh, I guess discuss that. Um, maybe at the next call, just to make sure that everybody has time to think about that, unless uh, people feel like they're ready to do that today. So yeah, also I apologize, I'm going to have to drop to, to head to the conference. Um, but okay, well, hopefully Hart, um, we will get some comments or some input on your security document uh, during the task force discussion. So hopefully look forward to some information showing up. Yeah, awesome. Um, feel free to comment or, or edit the document and you know I will try to make more changes and uh, I would eventually like to, to take that back to the open SSF to, to get their thoughts on it as well. So um, yeah, let me know if you, if you all need me for anything and thank you so much. Sounds good, thanks Hart. Um, all right, so then uh, Ursa, we do have a conversation here uh, to talk about moving that to end of life. Um, but before we get there, just a reminder, some upcoming reports that are due. 
Uh, today we have the Sauteth report that's due. I did see some conversations happening on that report to get that uh, submitted to us. So hopefully we'll be seeing that show up shortly. Uh, for next week, we do have the Aries, Indy, and Anon creds reports that are due. All right, so without further ado, um, I'm gonna discuss this uh, move Ursa to end of life. Uh, I did see Mike had created an issue for us in the TOC uh, and also on the Ursa uh, repo to move Ursa to end of life. There has been some discussion on the ticket that's in the Ursa repo uh, about people who support it, people who would like to not support that. Um, and so wanted to, I see that Mike is on the call. Mike, um, any comments or input that you would like to provide to the TOC? Yeah, sure. So the people that are probably requesting to keep it open um, are, I believe, Aroha and uh, some from the Aries community. And I believe this can be resolved pretty easily. Uh, by Aroha, I think is only using it for like one or two items. And so those could easily be extracted and given to their project. The rest of it that people are interested in could actually be moved to the Hyperledger non-creds project um, at, for some code and just put it there because that's really all they care about. The rest of it could just, no one's really using it. And the rest of the maintainers um, I mean, I was the principal maintainer for many years, and ever since, probably about three years ago, I, I haven't been able to give it full-time attention, and then as of 18 months ago, I pretty much stopped giving it any attention, and then the other two maintainers have just kind of been limping along on life support, so I believe those that are kind of requesting keep it open, their uh, concerns can be addressed really easily, and as for the rest of it, I don't see any reason to keep it open. There are open, there's probably about three open security vulnerabilities on it. Um, one of them is, well, they're all, they're all fixable. Uh, one of them requires a lot of coding, which the maintainers don't have time for. That's probably what you've got the task force discussion right there. Uh, the second one is an easy fix from a coding perspective, but it, will take a long time uh, for the cryptographers to work out what uh, whether that is actually a sufficient fix or not, which I also don't have time for. The third fix involves changing some code, which could mean breaking changes for downstream dependencies, which I think uh, would be, that's why I think it'd be better if they just pulled out what they need and applied it to their project. So it doesn't break anybody else who might need it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> all right, thank you for that, Michael. And I did see uh, Brent also on the issue in the Ursa repo did also say that he was in favor of moving Ursa to end of life as well. I think Brent is another maintainer on the project. Um, all right, so I guess we have a couple of hands here uh, to start the discussion, Alexander. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, our perspective has changed. Um, we are in favor of moving the project to EOL. Uh, specifically because when we were planning to maintain Ursa, we planned to break it down into um, smaller modules, which can be loaded independently, um, which meant that some Ursa functionality would have just been completely gone. Some of it is just re-exports of existing Rust libraries. Um, some other things, could have just been extracted, um, specifically the um, problematic cryptographic modules. Um, that is the intention, and this is where we're going. Um, we will be, uh, we will consider um, refining what was in Ursa and potentially uh, spinning it off, um, spinning off Iroha Crypto off of Iroha whenever there's need. Um, we will probably need to engage more with unknown creds and see what actually needs to be done with that. Um, perhaps even integrate unknown creds into Iroha. 
but and, I, and are, I'm and I'm available to help with that. I just don't have the full time capacity to maintain Earth anymore. So I'm happy to advise on how to do that and maybe code a little bit here and there. Um, in all due honesty, um, given the scope of the changes that we wanted to do, um, Ursa would not have been Ursa anyway. It would have been a completely different library, which had some of the code inspired by Ursa. This right. way, we are great from Semba compatibility and so on. So we'll we'll be happy to have you around and help us with that. Um, we will need a cryptographer eventually, but for now, the things that work, let's assume that they work well and let's use them. All right. Uh, so thank you for that. I, if I just want to make sure that I heard correctly in the ticket, you said you were against moving Ursa to end of life, and I, I think you've changed your mind to say that yes, Ursa moving to end of life is okay with the Aroha folks. Did I hear that correctly? Yes, precisely. Okay, great. Thank you so much, uh, Stephen. Yeah, um, I wanted to add to Mike's, um, I believe the BLS signatures work needs to be moved to Indy. Um, so that's a second piece that needs to be exported out of Versa. Um, so the CL signatures to to a non creds, I guess, um, and then BLS to Indy. Um, other than that, uh, I think we're okay with it being end of life. Um, Want to manage it. Um, to get it done right, I think we have a developer that can do it uh, to do most of the work. Like you helping out would obviously be appreciated. Um, we will get the one of the things we want to add on is is getting the CI/CD right. So that, um, the big thing in for us is on an on creds being able to get um, ARM supported and things like that. So it's the same sort of um, uh, issues that 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 we wanted. So I think it's it's the right thing to do and uh, we're, we're fine with it. Okay. Um, so it sounds like the objections that did exist in the ticket are no longer objections. Anybody else who has any objections to moving Ursa to end of life? Obviously not as a vote, but as a discussion item. I guess I have one question uh, for Mike. If this goes to end of life, should the crate be unpublished? Uh, yeah, I will yank it. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, what is, well <laughs> unpublished, what does that do to the dependencies that are using it today? Can, can you explain what that, the ramifications of doing that? Uh, yes. So in Rust, you can yank a crate and anybody who's currently using it is still has access to it. But if any new projects come online, it'll just say, hey, you shouldn't use this anymore. Like it just, it'll give them a hard error if it's a new project, but existing projects that have already pulled it before won't have a problem. Okay, so anyone building a non creds or building indie would not have a problem they shouldn't shouldn't cuz cuz i've cuz i've i pulled i've used crates that have been yanked and it it warns me and says hey this crate's been yanked but since you've been using it 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 will still allow it that sounds a bit like magic but the other thing we can do is publish one last crate that all it does is update the readme, right? That just says this project is no longer maintained. Okay. Um, I would prefer to do that. that. Unpublishing, it sounds like a scary thing. I, well, I don't know, maybe it works, but it sounds scary. Um, so I would like to do the latter and then maybe in three months or so, yank it. Okay. Um, so. Can we collaborate a bit on the readme? Mm -hmm. uh sounds yeah, good yeah yeah just submit a pr we can just submit a pr for that and then okay. you can review it alexander make sure you're looking for that too <laughs> oh, don't worry about me um we're um happy to help as much as we can sounds good 
All right, Arun. Hi, right. thanks, Rishi. Mike, thanks for um, um, stepping up and being available for people who are using Ursa if they want to move out of or like take a part of uh, the project that is in, of interest to them. And even though project is being proposed for EVOL, um, like because of the specialty requirement, which requires a cryptographer to understand or be able to answer some of the questions, it we still request you to be also available in just in case if um, Hyperledger staff or maybe the TOC or maybe other men members are requesting your help. All right. Any other comments before we get to a vote? No. Okay. Would somebody like to make a motion to move Ursa to end of life? It's tough, but sure, I'll make a move. All right, thanks, Aaron. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, thanks, Bobby. Rai, you wanna give us a vote? Sure, how do you want it? Do you want roll call or gaze and nays? Uh, I think gaze and nays are okay. Okay, on the uh, motion before the TOC to move Ursa to end of life status, is there anyone that abstains? Is there anyone that uh, wishes to vote nay on the proposal? All in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes. All right. Thank you. And uh, Mike, thank you so much for the, the work that you did put into URSA over the years. And uh, as Arun mentioned, uh, thank you for volunteering to help the folks who are currently using it to make any sorts of changes that they need. No Thanks, problem. Mike. I'll still be in the Hyperledger committee, just not, not as involved as <laughs> I could be, as much as I want to be. Thank you. Arun? Oh, um, I'm rising hand for Peter. I guess Peter is unable to unmute himself. Oh, Peter, you can't unmute yourself? Yeah, and I can't unmute him either. Um, Peter, uh, perhaps type in Discord. The host is not allowing for that. Uh, it says allow participant. It, okay, so I'm going to uncheck that box. And then I'm going to check the box again. Peter, now. I suggest that since other people have been able to unmute themselves, um, it's probably an issue on your end. Perhaps reconnect. Okay. And if you could, should we continue or did you? Was there something specific you wanted to? Okay, okay great. Thank you. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. So, I guess the next topic, uh, unless anybody else has anything they'd like to get to before we talk about the task force, uh, is the task force. Is there any other topics for discussion today before we do get to the task force discussion? Okay, Arun, I think it's uh, off to you then. Thanks, Tracy. So um, I know I wanted to send an email. Um, I hope you all can see my screen. We can. 
which screen am I sharing? Uh, the Is security policy vulnerability disclosure. Got it. Okay. All right. So um, I know we have had um, multiple discussions. I think I'll get back to the TUC recordings and then send an email update to the TUC mailing list sometime today or maybe end of this week regarding all the discussions summarizing um, the meeting minutes across different TOC calls that we had, the task board discussions. So we basically went through the recommendations that were listed under OpenSSF and we discussed through some of the policies that works best for us within Hyperledger. And um, Hart, that was really nice to put up or summarize the document and then propose that as a policy over here in the document. And I see um, already some of the review comments, which kind of discussions going on on the document. But if you have not had a chance to look at it, but please do uh, review this document once and uh, share your feedback. So um, since we have discussed the recommendation topics from OpenSSF, what's pending from uh, the task force as an outcome is to bring those into actionable items that we can propose to the TOC and get those voted upon. Um, and then uh, the re reviewing the document that you see on the screen. So um, in today's call, I think I just wanted to go through the document itself. And unless uh, you have any other topics to discuss. Okay. So since I don't see anybody raising hands, we'll probably read through the um, policy document in today's call, right? Um. So Tracy, I'm not sure. Like. How do we want to take this further? Do, do you want me to, again, discuss through some of this as a revision item, like the previous discussion points that we went through, or like do a review of the document in detail that we'd like to do? Uh, so I, it might be good to just cover the sections as a high level to talk about kind of what's in there. Um, so that people who haven't had a chance to look at it yet uh, at least know what they're going to be looking at when they do review it offline. Um, okay. And then, yeah, if you think there's any sort of comments that are maybe uh, controversial, right, where uh, we do need to have a discussion on those comments as a, as a wider group, then maybe that's a good thing to bring up as well. But anything that's like minor edits or things like that, I, I don't think we probably need to talk through those. Um, but if there's anything there that you just think um, might require some, let's have a conversation to see if where people stand on this. Uh, I think that's probably fine. Makes sense. Thanks, Tracy. So let's do that. Let's revise through uh, the high level topic items or the sections that are listed in the document. Again, these are the same set of topics that were discussed in the previous task force meetings. And um, without going into specifics, we will probably try to revise and, and like get back those discussion items that we had. And uh, for the details, I would again request you all to read through this document and then add those. As we like recently heard, as, as recent as in today's TUC call, there is possibility that um, like the projects end up in some certain uh, vulnerabilities, like they may end up because of an indirect dependency through the library they are using, or it could be possible that uh, the, the implementation itself could be missing certain uh, things from a security standpoint. And of course, like when we come to know about it, how do we mitigate the risk? How do we handle that? And how do we still keep the bar high for the projects across? So it would impact both the project as well as, um, let's say, from a community perspective, the the, the um, confidence on the code base that Hyperledger as a 
uh, foundation is having all those those projects that we have. So um, that's about the policy. And since this impacts all the projects that are incubated, and ideally, like it's always good practice to have this irrespective of the project status, good practice to have the security practices followed. But at least for the projects which are graduated, um, it affects the most, right? So over the period in during the task force discussions, we did have a proposal of having an infrastructure to handle the requests that are being raised uh, as a vulnerability issue, uh, which are being raised for security reasons. And um, in terms of infrastructure, and I, one of the key thing that we had discussions over was um, having um, like, so so the, there are two types of infrastructure that we are talking about here, like the the way of handling the incoming request as well as if at all anything can be done um, in terms of regular audits or regular reviews. So we did revise through the existing um options that um that we have from hyperledger for instance when i say existing options it goes back to like the security audits and the reviews that that um hyperledger was helping all the graduated projects with right now apart from that the other part of the infrastructure setup that we um wanted to bring up was can we bring in somebody who is, let's say, a responsible uh, person from each project and nominate them and create a small council or a group which deals with all the security related um, requests? And this is the core group who would then uh, navigate through the issues and then distribute them among the project groups and try to mitigate and then coordinate and um, have these addressed eventually right and then as part of that when we discussed there was proposal that instead of having one single person from each project we wanted to have let's say um i don't remember the number i'll need to go back to the meeting or the notes but i believe we proposed at least two or three from each project to be representing in that forum and um like they bring uh, these i mean they are the ones who would navigate when my issue is raised or when an intake request is found and they are also responsible to make sure that we navigate them through uh, the requests that are coming in we make sure this group is responsible to tell them about available policies and present them with the options on how to and when to make uh, the disclosure public right and we did have discussions about the scoring criteria or like the risk this is kind of a number that can be associated against each issue that is raised and this number higher the number the greater is the risk uh, that we carry unless we fix it sooner right so um and then we did have discussions around which tool to use for it. And um, as far as I remember, the proposal was that we start using uh, the GitHub's um, provided option. And apart from the number or the like scoring criteria, we did discuss about the embargo list. So this kind of talks about let's say there is like a core group of organizations who we consider has um, highly impacted um, a group of people so this could be let's say the platform providers that like, if if this group is um, compromised then there is high chance that like a large population is compromised and we did have discussions around how to come up with the list and who is responsible to maintain the list and what are the responsibilities from a project team's perspective and how are they supposed to communicate and what responsibility does the hyperledger staff have or like what really does this embargo list supposed to do and not do 
these discussions were uh, brought up during those discussion items. And um, so the other things that we um, discussed was about, uh, of course, the security advisories, but I mean, it does tell about us, right? Um, for instance, if somebody is using your project, how do we inform them about, let's say there is this thing that uh, that's going on with your project and then it has been fixed and now you want them to upgrade so that they are not impacted. This is kind of making them aware that uh, like they are on a lower, uh, like a previous version, which may be having a vulnerability that needs an attention from their st standpoint. And the other topics that we did have discussions over were uh, the private patch deployment infrastructure. So this is kind of an option where uh, you as a project team would develop or work on an issue in a private way. And when I say private way, like you're still involving the relevant stakeholders, the and having, uh, let's say a patch kind of approach that we do for bug fixes, right? So instead of testing and making all the code changes public, which may leak out the vulnerability inf information, it's good to do that development in a in a closed circle or in a closed uh, fashion, where only the relevant stakeholders are involved through the process, and they are aware of what's going on, and they do all the testing, and then once the once there is an agreement and once there is enough testing done, then the patch is uh, merged. And we did also bring up the topic of how to merge it and when to make the announcement. Like generally there is a grace period after the patch is merged before when a dis vulnerability is like made publicly available. But there is also a dis there was also a discussion where we had, uh, we spoke about like why it is important to disclose that information as soon as possible after a particular release is done right or after the pr is merged and that's pretty much it that we discussed about it and throughout the process through the task force we did bring up topics about how many days should it be before we release uh, let's say disclose a vulnerability in a public uh, forum or what's the um, metrics or like how many, how soon should we respond back and in terms of responsibility of that core group of uh, security uh, representation that we have from each project. So um, these are the topics that were discussed through the task force. I can summarize that in NTOC mailing list and copy this uh, document as well. But I hope this was a quick refresher and any questions so far on this topic? I don't see um, anybody raising hand or unmuting themselves. So I'm assuming there are no further questions. So this brings um, the security task force, uh, at least for the scope that we had, to a logical conclusion. And I think we need to formalize these policies that we have into proposal to the TOC and like to relevant parties where necessary and make them aware of these policies. With that, I guess I'll hand it back to Tracy. Okay, uh, just a question for those who have had a chance to review this uh, and edit your comments. Are there any uh, pieces that you'd like to 
uh, bring up as discussion items for the other TOC members at this point? Yes, Stephen. Yeah, I'd say um, I, I put in the comment there, and it's in there, and I think it might be worth the discussion, but um, this idea of separating out the how to do this from the here's a sample um, document that a project or a repository could use. Um, I'm okay with it being all in the same document, but I think it would be worth not trying to um, combine the two where you're explaining what you're doing and providing an example in the same context. So that's the only thing I'd like to see is just there be a very specific thing that you copy paste into yours and then adjust for your particular project. Okay, any thoughts on, on that for folks who have looked at it or even if you haven't looked at it? I mean, Stephen, I think it, it mimics kind of what you did with the uh, maintainer.md file uh, where you had kind of the, the sample file separate than uh, the actual text around how we do, or how we expect maintainers.md file to exist. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I just find as a, as a maintainer, it's, it's much easier to deal with it that way. Okay. Arun, you did have your hand up. Is there something you wanted to add to that? Oh, um, I wanted to comment there, like, instead of splitting document, if there were any other suggestions on how else to, like, talk about the policy, if there are any other suggestions. I guess not. <laughs> um, okay. Anything else then that anybody would like to bring up as far as comments that they did add that they'd like to make sure that we do bring up here to discuss? All right, uh, so it does sound like we've made some good progress then on the security task force. Uh, so very similar to, I think, uh, what we did last week with the best practices. We'll probably have Arun one more uh, time for discussion for the security uh, vulnerability disclosure task force to bring back to the TOC kind of what uh, they would like to make as far as changes specifically to any of our uh, guidelines and or um, governing documents to to make sure that the the results of this task force are included there on the TOC website. Um, so yeah, I guess with that, uh, is there anything else that anybody would like to discuss today? No? Okay. Uh, so, Bobby, I think you're up next. Um, it also sounds like maybe we need to take a look at our task force uh, issues that we did create at the beginning of our session for this year um, to see if there's other ones that we would like to pick up at this point uh, going forward, um, you know, probably in the next couple of weeks. So we'll probably take a look at those maybe next week as well. Um, and I guess I will let you go 
and uh, talk to you again next week. Sounds good. Thank you, Tracy. All right. Thanks, Bobby.